Anthropic uh, gravitation away background from non Gaussian calculations. I'm not saying that the cosmology is more important than the collider. I missed the part, part of the uh, non-causality because my title has a non-causality. So uh, the previous talk, I believe I uh, have uh, talked about the non-causality and perturbations. And, uh, and the topics are, as an isotropy, you may say it's, it's really far in the future. It is far in the future. Yeah, we're talking about uh, we haven't detected the gravitational wave background yet, and uh, I don't know when we will see it. Um, and try, uh, I will talk about this uh, later. And actually, I gave this talk to one of my students over 10 years ago, and he, he, he is a very good student. He got an offer from Caltech again. I was so happy because Caltech is doing gravitational wave. But at the end, he escaped from that and to go to other places. I was. Since then, I also escaped from, from this topic. <laughs> you, you know, yeah. The gravitational wave, 10 years ago, nobody expected we will see it soon. And this is the, uh, uh, the possible uh, uh, cosmological uh, uh, gravitational wave. And this one, I, uh, this, I accept I divide it into two kind of source, uh, as your physical source. It's more confirmed because we have seen the LIGO macro and the super, uh, super, uh, superposition of all the measures in the long history of the universe could uh, generate a background. We call this a stochastic quotation wave background. And I personally, I believe that we could see the uh, the, this uh, background, uh, not very long, soon, in the future. And there's some other background, prediction. This is also prediction. This is from a uh, from million million solar mass cycle merger. And this is from, um, uh, this is billion, this is million million uh, uh, mergers. And uh, the, uh, the main theme of this talk is about cosmology. And we have uh, invasion. Uh, this one is the uh, uh, the, the density uh, hiding in the gravitational wave in the universe, and this is the frequency. And well known the, the prediction from uh, inflation is a plateau. And there's some other interesting source uh, from uh, global string. I noticed that uh, we will have a, a, a talk about uh, this uh, uh, gravitational wave background generated from uh, cosmic string this afternoon uh, by. Uh, by Dr. Jiang. And we are also the electric phase transition. It is very strongly uh, first order. Uh, we have signal here. And then uh, there's some other uh, signals. And today we are really uh, talking about this, uh, this part, the cosmology signal. And uh, some of you may not be familiar with uh, gravitational wave. I just uh, use a few graphs to, uh, to give you an idea. And this is the gravitational wave uh, in the TD gauge. And uh, it's 
it's not so difficult to understand, as, except this, uh, we call this a uh, tensor, because the uh, rotation will be tensor field, and we need a tensor uh, polarization vector, uh, so we call this one. And this uh, is constructed from, look at this, this is the direction of the gravitational wave, the wave factor, and we can construct the uh, polarization tensor all of these two uh, univector, something like this, this so-called plasmo and this called cosmo. And uh, we are doing uh, a stochastic gravitational uh, wave, and, and the ensemble, the, uh, you would say the average over a different universe or uh, over uh, space area average. Yeah, we expect this uh, uh, function. And notice that uh, here, uh, I still keep the spectrum. This is called a spectrum. Depend on the direction. Although from uh, 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 translational invariance, uh, you should not uh, expect uh, is uh, de uh, position dependent. But here, I still keep the uh, anisotropy because we are doing as anisotropy, and we will come back to that uh, later. Uh, a little bit later. Uh, if you don't want to use the cos or plus mode, you can use the right hand or uh, left hand uh, uh, basis, something like this, a composition of this, and get another set of uh, uh, power spectrum. And here, maybe not for, for the, this one, uh, the I is uh, intensity, cos, and Q is the Q stock parameters, U is the U stock parameters, and V is the circular polarization. And how to uh, uh, visualize this uh, power spectrum? Uh, actually, experimentally, it's easy to understand. And we measure the, we measure the, for example, we measure the PASMO by LIGO. The LIGO is here, there's an arm, an arm, 90 degree here. There's an arm, two arm, and 90 degree. And suppose we measure the, LIGO measure the uh, PASMO, PASMO. And, and then you uh, rotate, but uh, this is a theoretical uh, uh, imagination. You rotate LIGO by 45 degree, 45 degree, the arm. Rotate the arms of the LIGO by 45 degree, and you measure the gravitational wave again, then you got the U mode, the, uh, the U mode. Oh, sorry, uh, 45, oh, sorry, sorry. You rotate the, uh, 45 degree, then you measure again, you get the uh, cost, and then you subtract the two signal, and then give the Q parameter. And how you get the U parameter, you rotate the arm by, uh, by 22.5 degree, and measure uh, the gravitational wave, and then you rotate again, uh, 45, and get U more. This is uh, how to uh, how to understand the Q and U uh, in terms of the uh, instrument. Okay, and because I, I work on CMB for, for a while, so uh, we have a full language about this, how to describe uh, this anisotropy uh, uh, and polarization in the sky. And we decompose uh, the anisotropy uh, and also it means the uh, density fluctuation in different direction and in terms of this uh, ceramic and similarly Q and U also uh, but uh, a little bit tricky you have, because Q and U as we have seen before is coordinate dependent so you have to uh, take care of this uh, coordinate dependent and uh, expand this in terms of so called spin form spin force programmatics. In CMB, you expand in terms of spin 2, but now we are, we are dealing with a tensor gravitational wave, so it's spin 4. Yeah. Here and then, the U mode, the U mode is scalar, is uh, just here. And then you can construct, construct, very similar to CMB, construct four independent uh, power spectrum. If the correlation between T and E, then you similarly, you, you, you have a more uh, uh, power spectrum. And again, uh, that's what well, uh, I, I skip. I skip from Q and U because it's not a, a good quantity to use. It's a coordinate dependent. So I use the so-called E mode, the B mode, is something because 
uh, two-dimensional vector is you can easily uh, decompose into two independent so called the E pattern that's, that's the, the story about the, uh, uh, the, the, the power spectrum uh, to fully describe uh, gravitational wave and isotropy and polarization. Okay, and how to generate uh, 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 gravitational wave uh, and isotropy and polarization. And now, actually, uh, when I came back to this uh, business, it's quite uh, popular in the past two years. I missed many, many of the ref reference. And actually this year, just a few months ago, we uh, really a big uh, Italian group, and they try to uh, generate an isotropy and polarization on the uh, rotation wave background. And they try a lot, and at the end, they use uh, the so-called the, the CMP technique, the Boltzmann equation for graph time. I, I, I changed the name because I may confuse you if I still use the gravitational wave. I use the gravitons as our uh, the, the uh, gravitational wave, uh, the cosmological graviton background. Okay, how to do it? Uh, we have graviton just like photon, then you have a distribution function. This is a, uh, this is a distribution function uh, for graviton and phase space distribution function. And then obey the uh, uh, Boltzmann equation. And for graviton, it's easy. You don't worry about this uh, correlational. This correlation is essentially. I just, uh, it's just put zero, there's no collisions at all for coefficient wave. And that is a very simple uh, collision as uh, Boltzmann equation. Okay, then what's the source to generate this anisotropy is the, uh, the space time fluctuation. Yeah, this part takes care of the phase, phase, uh, space time uh, fluctuations. And similar to CMB, there's a two sources uh, be, uh, due to the density fluctuation or Newtonian potential changes. Uh, over time and space, and I have this uh, transfer function to take care of this uh, uh, variation in time. And I make a Fourier transform to take care of uh, the variation in space. Yeah, this this so-called, in the period start, uh, we talk about this uh, power spectrum, the, the density power spectrum here, and this is transfer function to take care of the time evolution. And another uh, source to, uh, to give an isotropy and polarization to uh, graviton is the gravitational wave background itself. It's kind of strange. Gravitational, when we're talking about gravitational wave, we talk about another source for anisotropy and, and polarization. That, in there, that's because emo and BMO. Yeah, it's very similar to CMB. This is a gravitational wave uh, background uh, contribution to the anisotropy and polarization of uh, 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 GWB. And similar, this is the uh, this is the background, and then uh, this is uh, uh, how much background you uh, you have uh, in the in, in space. Uh, it will uh, imprint on the gravitons uh, 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 direction dependent, and maybe as well as the uh, polarization. Okay, and this is uh, all. This is not new. Uh, if you're familiar with CMB, then this is really a copy of CMB. Okay, and then just uh, expand the intensity. Uh, let's talk, just talk about the intensity uh, only. The uh, polarization is more complicated and uh, maybe very small. Yeah. And this is intensity, uh, again, we expand in terms of this, uh, because of the whole, whole sky data, and then we, we like to use the harmonics. And uh, uh, the, Fourier, the Fourier transform then project into a uh, curved space, a sphere, then use for harmonic gain. And this is, this is called a scalar contribution from the uh, density perturbation is uh, given by this. This is, uh, this is the uh, uh, anisotropy power spectrum. And this is the source, the power spectrum, the density power spectrum. And this is a projection. And this is the time, uh, this is a transfer function to care of the time variation of this uh, density perturbation. And very long, uh, this is this piece, this piece, and is the, uh, this one is the sum of the turn, uh, the subswing effect for CMP photons, this one, and the transfer is uh, doing uh, the uh, better dominate, it's only a, a constant number. And actually, if your uh, Newtonian potential changing with time, uh, as it is now, because uh, we know the universe accelerating, you still have the so-called integrating uh, 
uh, integrated uh, subsequent effect here. It's the care of the time variation of the potential. And this, 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 this is the uh, scalar contribution to the anisotropy. And the tensor contribution is similar. It's, a, it's just a projection and then some uh, uh, transfer function. Okay. Uh, at the end, uh, you just talking. About, we are just in, uh, we are just talking about the Sachs Sachs movement or integrated Sachs effect uh, contribution. It's ac actually just the gravitational redshift of gravitons in different directions. Uh, this is the how the uh, the inhomogeneities of universe uh, generate uh, C, uh, w, uh, GWB and isotropy. Okay. Uh, then the pic the picture we can uh, think of is the uh, the uh, GWB and isotropy map is big because mainly due to the subsequent effect. So it's very similar to the at the end if if we can detect it if we can detect it it really looks like a, a Kobe map Kobe map. You can imagine in the future uh, we have a GW and isotropy map is something like this is something like this. If the analysis in the previous uh, 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 and, uh, uh, papers are correct, okay. And we are talking about this. Uh, we solved the uh, Boltzmann equation, Boltzmann equation, and we have source hidden here. And you may say, yeah, uh, there's a, you can put a initial condition. Yeah, initial condition can also give you an isotropy, and in the uh, in the second paper, uh, this uh, big Italian group, uh, and they all, they, they, yeah, they indeed uh, investigate uh, uh, the initial condition generated by uh, primordial back holes. Okay, what's the story? And good, uh, I think uh, this afternoon we have a talk, uh, no, tomorrow morning, we have a talk about uh, this uh, gravitational wave generated by primordial back hole formation. And uh, by uh, Professor Yu, uh, if I just uh, prepare one few graph, uh, if not clear, that please uh, come uh, tomorrow morning. Yeah. And this is the uh, sourceless. Uh, this is a free uh, Cartesian wave uh, equation, and uh, we talk about the quantum fluctuation. And then the spectrum, the spectrum of this Cartesian wave during inflation is is uh, very small, very small. This, this is very small. And there's a chance to enhance uh, the gravitational wave uh, due to the formation of primordial black holes. And why? Uh, because uh, the, to generate primordial black hole, you need a big uh, density perturbation somehow during inflation, somewhere at some scale. And this big uh, curvature perturbation or density perturbation uh, cannot be neglected uh, in the whole course of the year. You have to put this on the right-hand side. This source is coming from the huge uh, density perturbation you generate during inflation or any time. And when this uh, density perturbation we enter the horizon, and it, it may form by, uh, by model by holes, and at the same time generate a spectrum of gravitational wave. And I give, just give you a, a sense how you uh, you get this uh, huge gravitational wave. Uh, and for example, if you use the uh, uh, inverton uh, uh, model, something like this is very strange. Like some some sign modulation on this uh, flat uh, uh, potential, and you uh, like the, uh, the, the the period stop. You couple the inverton to, for example. Uh, massness vector field, and you can generate a huge uh, density perturbation during inflation as well as non gauss energy. Yeah, we learned it uh, this morning. And this huge density perturbation or non gauss energy will, will generate, uh, uh, it, it, they act as source on the uh, gravitational wave equation, and it will generate a huge uh, gravitational wave spectrum. Something like this, if you use different potential and the model will give you uh, gravitational wave sensitive to light diesel or the current uh, LIGO experiment. Okay, and we have uh, in the early universe uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, primordial holes are being formed 
and how to generate an isotopy on the gravitational wave generated by this uh, uh, primordial O. Oh, the story is like this. Uh, we talk about uh, the initial conditions. This is uh, uh, the, the, the time uh, during which uh, primordial have formed. And since our universe is isotropic and homogeneous, you won't expect any anisotropy. Yeah. And the paper uh, we just saw, uh, they, uh, okay, and how to, uh, this is, uh, uh, imagine, uh, okay, okay, assume we have an initial uh, condition, uh, which violate uh, anisotropy, give you anisotropy. And just uh, fully transform it uh, to the uh, sphere space, and just uh, to, to get the power spectrum. And how to get the, uh, so we need a position dependent, uh, position de uh, dependent initial condition. Uh, that means, I just said, if the uh, universe is homogeneous isotropic, then this term should not be dependent on position. And the previous paper, And that paper, they, uh, actually, they, they, the topic, uh, non Gaussian. Yeah. And they assume, uh, the, for example, local type distance, for example. Yeah. And when you calculate uh, 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 the gravitational wave induced by the huge, uh, by the large uh, density perturbation, and we see that there's a T, uh, uh, TIJ, it's a, a quadratic term, so you expect the spectrum is uh, depending on the density perturbation to the power 4, and you got this uh, decomposition, and the most important thing is you keep the long wavelength mode untouched. You don't uh, take the welcome expectation value. That makes sense because our universe is finite. And this uh, long wavelength mode uh, is out, is our horizon during maybe during the formation of that over. So you keep the long wavelength open and just uh, uh, take an uh, ensemble average on the soft wavelength. This one it will give you a position dependent initial condition, and that in turn uh, give you the position dependent uh, partition wave. That means the partition wave you want to generate during formation of primordial hole is uh, an isotope. And that's what tropic. Okay, and so far uh, I haven't touched my. Uh, this is second part. Uh, okay, this is the second part of uh, my talk. And okay, uh, uh, the the, uh, the previous thing is uh, uh, is uh, the main words uh, the, the done by this uh, Italian group. And now we come back to uh, to zero, and to see what we are going to measure and to observe. Okay, this is the uh, just, uh, this is ABC, this uh, we have seen partition wave, and this is a uh, power spectrum. And in a if we talk about cosmology, it should be an isotopy and homogeneous. So this power spectrum should not depend on position or uh, direction. In the previous uh, the, uh, slides, uh, we, we assume this also uh, depend on the di uh, direction of the wave factor, but here we're talking about cos cosmology. We should not uh, do that. We have a principle uh, of uh, uh, the, we have the cosmology principle. Yeah, we cannot do it. And this is the we are visualizing this is the uh, uh, energy, the spectral energy uh, in uh, partition wave uh, related to the critical density. And what is the partition observables? And we have an arm, we have this detector of cancer, and this is the observable. We measure the string, the partition wave string, yeah, uh, of the incoming uh, partition wave. And why? Uh, and then we uh, we can correlate uh, different string data uh, between different detectors. This is the this is observable. This is observable. And this is the uh, if you have a theory, you predict. This is a prediction. Yeah depending on the power spectrum of the partition wave. Uh, why I'm talking about this? Because uh, the previous paper, the previous work, they talk about the uh, graviton, the intensity of graviton. We never measure the intensity of graviton. In CMB, you measure the temperature of the CMB from, from, from some direction. But in gravitational wave, we, 
sorry, maybe in the future we can measure the temperature of the incoming partition wave, but not yet. Uh, we measure the string day, the string of the partition wave. So this is observable. I, I'm not saying that they are, they are wrong, but maybe in the real far future that we can do it. But for the time being, we measure the uh, partition wave string. So we stick to the partition wave observable. Okay, what, then what's the non-Gaussian? Well, we, have, we talk about the non-Gaussianity in uh, generally the anisotropy. So we also, okay, this is non-Gaussianity, and this is the, power spec, uh, the density power spectrum. And uh, this is, the, uh, this is a, co a correlation, but I keep. And what's the possibility when I'm doing this and some spatial average, we cannot do uh, uh, infinite volume because we are, the observable universe is finite. So I just keep I just keep the long waiting flow open. Yeah, this is the result. If you keep if you just average the short waiting move and leave the uh, long waiting flow open, and then you got this result. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, you just got a very simple uh, power spectrum, and then if you keep the long waiting flow open, then you get this uh, a little bit complicated. The the main importance is position dependent. That's what I want. I want a quadrilateral wave uh, position dependent. And okay, this one finally you got a, a, a power spectrum for the scalar mode uh, and the position dependent. And that position uh, dependent will induce a partition wave power spectrum, also a position dependent. And this is uh, follow the same, uh, 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 just expand in terms of uh, square harmonics. And then at the end, then you get you got this one. Yeah. This is again. Is the uh, uh, subsequent effect uh, due to this tensor uh, uh, perturbation? But unlike the previous work, and you you only you, you cannot sum up uh, all the mole, you just sum up the supervised mole, supervised mole. And and this 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 part uh, this anisotropy actually is the uh, is, uh, is the subsequent effect. But you just sum up those uh, supervised mole because we keep the long waiting. Uh, Open only the short waiting curve, we just kill it. Yeah. It won't give you any anisotropy. Only those super uh, super uh, uh, will give you anisotropy. And yeah, in uh, in morning we see the NDL uh, constraint is very tightened, it's around one uh, from plan. But if you're talking about super horizon mode, there's uh, less constraint. It could be go a uh, pretty big, yeah, honey. So the advantage of using this supervisor mode is that you 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 will you have a, a bigger bigger uh, an assortment. Oh, okay, the implication is this non Gaussian uh, non Gaussian super mode density have, have used to actually people use this idea to explain the CMB uh, anomaly. Well, CMB anomaly uh, we have CMB uh, multiples, but uh, it's very strange. Uh, the low quadruple is very low, and then there's a law uh, south law of uh, power asymmetry, and also some uh, evil axis. Evil axis. Yeah, these are anomaly. Uh, CMB anomaly. And people actually use the idea, the superhorizon mode, to explain this anomaly. And the interesting thing is that anisotropy uh, in the future, if you can see it, uh, may give uh, independent evidence of the non Gaussian through the CMB. This is a connection uh, to the previous uh, measurement. I thought uh, it's interesting. And uh, okay, come to conclusion, and uh, CMB. Uh, 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 GWB, uh, GWB, um, uh, uh, it's, it's on the list, yeah, it's on this on LIGO. It's a main goal in, uh, in uh, current uh, GW experiment, also future experiment. And I believe we will see the multiple soon. And the double shift is uh, one in thousand, it takes some time. Should be uh, before, uh, before I, I, I don't exist in this body. Yeah, and CMB and uh, sort of be and is far. Yeah, and before that, before the the, the detection, we may compute other cosmological data, um, the large scale structure CMB correlation, uh, make it easier. And okay, it's a deeper because partition wave uh, do not interact with uh, matter, so it's a very deep of Perfect. Uh, I don't have time to prepare the perspective. I just put in the CMB uh, mouse. Yeah, I think it's very similar in the future. And also the time scale, you may add a hundred years, hundred years here. Yeah, we see uh, 1965, add a hundred, add a hundred, 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 hundred. There's a lot of prizes waiting for our next generation. Thank you.
Question? No question? No, because there's a sex speaker here. <laughs> 